This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. It's me. It's Alex Bennett, and it is the Ramble, and it goes on from now until uh, midnight Eastern time here in the United States of America. If you're around the world, uh, figure out what time it is in New York City, and if it's between, well, if it's ten oh six in New York City, then wherever you are, it's live. But if it isn't live, it's a recording, and that's good, too. Uh, if you want to go to see us, uh, our actual visage, uh, you can go to Facebook Live. You can go to, um, actually, facebook.com forward slash A Bennett, and you can actually see our picture, okay? So we're here in all our ugliness, and I, I thank you for that. Um, let me see here. Where do I start off tonight? I don't know. Uh, oh, I'll tell. Well, first of all, uh, let me say that uh, you know occasionally we have technical difficulties here, uh, and last night we had a technical difficulty, which is very common to this program. We we, it, we use Skype, as you know, as our method of communication because we get video on people as well as uh, the just pristine audio. It's really been a terrific, it's been a godsend to doing a talk show. But this way we can put 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 people on the phone at the same time or on, the, on Skype. I don't want to say phone because it's really not a phone. Uh, and uh, we use that as our primary vehicle for, for uh, talking to each other. And uh, it... Uh, Last night we had a problem we've had upon occasion, and that is when people call, I, I get a little thing up there. It says who's calling, and then it says add to group, and you click on that, and it adds them to the group. Well, last night it wasn't doing that, okay? And in one case, the first time it happened, I thought sometimes that happens when people try to sign in using a previous conference call with us. And uh, so I assumed that our first caller was doing that. So I just said, call back, call back, same problem. Finally, somebody else called. And I noticed we had the same problem. And so I immediately said, okay, everybody, I'm going to hang up on you. I'm just going to reboot Skype. And I rebooted Skype, and everything was fine. And on top of that, I asked this particular individual to, uh, uh, to call back that, you know, that uh, it turns out that the problem wasn't his, that the problem was a... Uh, a problem with Skype, and uh, we had solved it. And uh, I don't hear anything from him. You know, I'm not going to say who he is. I don't hear anything from him. And um, then I turn on Jack Bishop and Amy Manuel's show, The Intersection, right after my show, because I listen to it as I'm doing work here and so on. And this guy calls up and goes, I'm very mad at Alex. And he starts going to this diatribe. And so I just lost it. I got on the phone and I yelled at this guy and I said, look, you know, I have enough trouble trying to do a show here and getting everything in the right place. I mean, do you realize what I'm doing? I'm actually sending a signal out to an encoder for the audio portion of the show. I am sending out, um, uh, what is it? Uh, I'm sending out audio to the, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, encoder for the audio part of the show, and I'm doing that part of the show, and I'm also uh, controlling all the audio and how high levels are and how low certain levels are. And then on top of that, I'm running a video signal in which I have to create a video signal that goes out to Facebook Live and also is making a recording that I can make into a, into a thing later on after the show. So I've got a lot of things to do. Okay, and I've got to get them all right, otherwise none of it works. All right, uh, and so this is my this is this is the duty I have foisted upon myself. And uh, this guy is like, oh, I'm mad at Alex because blah blah blah. And I even had said on the air to the guy, call now, you know, because we're sorry, uh, it was just a general problem with Skype. 
And the next thing I know, he's bitching and moaning to another show that uh, he's mad at me. He's really mad at me. So I called up and I just told him, listen, you son of a bitch, you know. I've got a job to do here, and when if things break down, I have to figure out what's wrong with them, and I have to do I have to do it in the quickest possible manner so the show doesn't fall apart. Okay. And uh, uh, I said, "Fuck you," and don't ever call the show again. And it, that's you know that's one of the things I guess that bothers me most of all is that I, you know. Uh, I, the, the, I, I think there's a certain appreciation for what I do here, but I don't think you, uh, some people, especially this person, because he was so self-centered that he thought, you know, the, the whole problem was about him, that um, it, it, some people don't realize how much I do here just to get a show on the air. And, you know, I could have just done this as an audio show and we just put it out there to the encoder and everybody would be really happy. All right, but I don't do that. I, uh, I I also do the video as well, and so I put an extra problem on me. And then on top of that, you've got Skype. And Skype, while I would say ninety-five percent of the time it works okay, uh, the five percent that doesn't causes a real problem. And uh, uh, we rely on it because it's it's a basic part of our show. And in my case. It not only is the audio part of the show, which if that's all it was, I wouldn't worry about it as much, but it's also the video part of the show. I mean, I spent all weekend long because uh, Skype changed their, their interface to a thing called New Skype, okay? Well, I can't use New Skype because it doesn't put the pictures on the screen the way I like to have them for this show. It, it would mean I would have to do more work about pointing on bubbles and doing things like that, and I didn't want to do that. I spent all weekend trying to find out how I could just use the classic Skype, and then I found out that Skype allowed for people to install classic Skype if you didn't want that newer version. So, you know, it was just little things like that, and it, it took me half a day to figure the whole damn thing out, you know. So it takes me longer as I get older. Uh, you notice I'm wearing the... Uh, Look at that. Isn't that, isn't that disgusting? Uh, uh, anyway, where was I? Oh, so uh, anyway, all I'm saying is uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, but I, I have a job here to do, and uh, I would like to be able to do it as well as I possibly can, and, and I don't need somebody bitching and moaning and saying, oh, I'm mad at Alex. You know, he doesn't even need to bring that up on somebody else's show. That's what's so ridiculous about it, and I just I went ballistic. Just went ballistic, um, you know. And of course, once again, thought about quitting because why am I doing this? So some guy can go on another show and bitch because I didn't wasn't able to take his call because there was a problem. So, eh, fuck that. Anyway, you know what I did earlier today? I, I was fooling around I, as I always do in here. I'm tr I try to see what I can do and what I can't do. And um, I had an old video. And I decided, because I wanted to see, number one, there's something with Facebook where I'm, I'm really afraid to put anything on, like even a clip of the President of the United States, because they then black you out and so on if it's, if it's what they consider copyrighted material. And quite frankly, they don't have a good idea of what's copyrighted and what isn't. I mean, one, you know, there is a certain thing in this business that's known as... Um, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Pub uh, not public domain, but uh, fair comment, okay? And when something is fair comment, let's say I want to talk about a particular way in which Bob Dylan phrases a lyric. And so I then pull out a small part of, say, blowing in the wind as an example of that. I can do that. Because I'm using it as an example. I can't play the whole thing. I can't use it as an excuse to steal the music. But I can use it to make a point. And the same would be true of, say, a film clip. Or if somebody on some show did something wrong, like the other night on Saturday Night Live when it played here, uh, the word fuck actually got out on the air. It would have been fun to be able to play just that little clip there to show you that the word fuck got out. 
But any time that Facebook sees anything that might remotely be copyright infringement, boom, they lower the, they literally, uh, one time they took me off the air, and other times with audio, they will mute the audio, okay? Uh, which isn't as bad as them taking me off the air altogether because then I got to put myself back up again and it's, it's a pain in the ass. So you get what I'm saying so far? So it, but somehow they've got their, their uh, sensitivity meter on high and anytime they see something that may be suitable for, uh, for, for uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, for uh, uh, you know, public comment, uh, and to be able to use it because you're 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 speaking of it by talking about it and and so on. Or you want to show the president of the United States. You want to show the way Lester Holt handled a particular story, and you want to point out that it, maybe he he was prejudiced in the way he did it. I can't show you. I can only tell it to you because I am not allowed uh, fair comment. And uh, the, the, you are allowed to use materials like that, provided you're making a statement, you're making a comment, or whatever. Anyway, you get my point? So I ran this thing tonight, which was an old video uh, from 1999. In fact, uh, Tommy Yamaguchi was watching it, and he, he figured it out to be November 11th, 1999. And it was the Alex Bennett program from Play TV. And uh, it, it, uh, um, it was actually the first, to my knowledge, the first ever daily live internet television program, okay? And so I thought it'd be fun to show the one copy of it that I have. I think I may have some more in, uh, I may have some more copies on the VHS in, in, uh, storage, but I, I this is the only one that I have available to me. So I figured oh, I'll play it live. Okay, so I play it live, and I only did about half of it, and then I got out of it and went on my merry way. Well, at the same time, I went over to Facebook and just uploaded it up to Facebook Live, which is the page we ha uh, excuse me uh, Gabnet Live, where you can see it now. It's there the whole two hours. And I get a notification from Facebook. We have put your thing up on the web, but we've had to mute a certain portion of the program. I mean, it was, it was one of these form letters, so it didn't say where or what. That would have helped. So I go through the whole thing, and I'm looking for anything where they could do this. And it's at the very end of the show when there's a theme song, and it starts playing, and they mute it. Now, the funny part about it was I had an opening theme song they didn't mute, and I actually had a song in the middle of the show that I used for, like, what we call interstitial music between segments, and I need a little breather. So, you know, we put up the uh, Alex Bennett program logo, and uh, the music is playing. I think it was Arturo Sandoval. They didn't take that out either. In other words, all they took out was the music at the end of the show, which didn't matter to me. But they didn't catch these other two incidences where it happened. So, you know, they're being, they're being ridiculous. By the way, if I use that same music over at YouTube, YouTube would say, well, if the people want to make money off you using their music, uh, they have the right to ask for a commercial to be put before your video. And that's fine with me, you know. Any way can get paid, but they have a way of handling it, and they're much better at it. And you can also, you can just write them and say, no, I own this work, or it was fair comment. That's the term I was looking for, fair comment. And uh, they, they immediately will take it right down. They just want whatever your excuse is, you know. I mean, I can't turn around and show a movie, although people do put whole movies up on, fa uh, on YouTube. But uh, I don't know how, and I don't know why, but they do. So that that works now. So I put so I put this up and I left it up. I, it's only like uh, an hour of it. If you want the whole two hours minus the muted music at the very end, courtesy of fucking Facebook, you know these are the guys that let the Russians dic dictate our uh, election. Uh, you can go over to face uh, uh, Gabnet Live. You just uh, Facebook.com forward slash Gabnet Live. And the, vi the video is there of, uh, of our old show, the whole thing, if you want to watch it. Or if you want to watch it uh, on here, you can see about an hour of it. It's right below 
this video. <laughs> okay. So anyway, that, that's my that's my little my little gripe today with uh, the wonderful people out there at Facebook. Okay. So uh, anyway, I was thinking about it, you know, and and uh, this show that I ran. I watched it, you know, and it was really amazing. Again, it, it's kind of what I'm doing right now, uh, although we had sl slightly better technology. We uh, because I well, uh, I, I could have that same technology here if I had a blue screen in back of me. But I, as you can see, I don't I don't have the room for it. Okay, if you're watching on uh, Facebook Live, I don't have the room for it. But if I had a, a, a I, you know, that whole background that you'll see if you watch it is actually uh, a chroma key it's uh and it it was it was really um a fairly sophisticated show in which i ran all the controls just like i'm doing here so i was doing this in 1999 nobody else was doing that and um i learned my great lesson don't ever be the first to do something be the second the first one always has to suffer the slings and arrows of, of outrageous fortune on something like that. So, you know, uh, let me reach back and get some stuff here. So, you know, uh, you know, even, you might enjoy it. I think you might enjoy it. But I watched it, and I was very proud of myself. I said, we really did something back then. And, um, and it was all done to promote a piece of equipment that we used to do it um, because the company we did it through, Play Incorporated, had this, this big box uh, and they uh, called it a uh, they they, ch they called it a Trinity, and then it was later changed to the Globecaster by the people who took over the company. And it was like a whole video station in a in a box. Now I can do the same thing we used to do uh, with the Trinity, pretty much right here and now with the piece of software I'm using that's free called OBS. So it's really amazing how since 1999 the technology has changed, just the programming still sucks, okay? Anyway, I have a couple of items here I thought I would, uh, I would send your way because they're, uh, they are interesting in and of themselves. Uh, first of all, the latest uh, um, um, victim in all of this uh, Me Too thing uh, is Casey Affleck. As you may remember, last year he won the Oscar, okay? And, and that was all well and good. He, he won it on, in time because all of a sudden, uh, uh, after that, some people came out and said, uh, I don't know, he did some improprieties. I can't remember what they were exactly. But anyway, as you know, in the Oscars uh, every year, uh, the Best Actor Award is given away by the woman who won the Best Actress, and the Best Actress Award is traditionally given by the person who won Best Actor. And last year, that was Casey Affleck. But now they're all saying, how can he introduce a woman, blah, 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 because he had this. He's, has all these people not proving it, but assailing him for something, okay? So anyway, he notified uh, the Academy is not going to be attending the event, sources said. He said, I've heard from Affleck, said uh, this one person, that he doesn't want to become a distraction from the focus that should be on performance of actresses in the category, and that is why he made the proactive move. He is in a no-win situation with all the attention surrounding the Me Too movement. The specter of Affleck presenting would have created a controversy. Controversy began swirling around Affleck soon after he won his Oscar last year, as a backlash has generated over sexual harassment allegations from several years earlier. Uh, as has been reported previously, Affleck has denied the allegations, that's in big red letters here, which stem from when he directed a 2010 mockumentary called I'm Still Here. Remember that was about, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy with the hair lip. Um, oh, God, I'm trying to remember. The, he, he played Johnny Cash. Um, and he said that he was going to do be, become a rock star or something, and they did this this uh, movie about it, and it was a mockumentary. Uh, and uh, boy, I cannot remember his name. Somebody's going to remember his name out there. I just know uh, uh, <laughs> somehow. I, I I know somebody's going to uh, going to uh, tell me who who I'm thinking about. Uh, but anyway. Um, 
So anyway, and oh, one other thing about this video that I ran last night. Uh, I don't know, last night and tonight, video watching has been slow. I don't know why. Monday it was off the charts, okay? So I have no idea why one night is different than another night outside of when it's, you know, Passover. Uh, uh, so uh, I do this thing this afternoon, just playing this old show at about, I don't know, 6 o'clock tonight, Eastern time. And it gets tons of viewers. I got more viewers on that than I got last night on the show. Okay? So uh, maybe I should just run old reruns of me and that will suffice, okay? But anyway, see, we're, we're already going down on, in numbers. I, I don't understand this at all. Yeah, fuck you. Why do I do this every night? This is, like, frustrating. By the way, Meryl Streep has been cast as a member of the show Big Little Lies when it returns for season two. Uh, HBO said the two, uh, it, 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 she's going to appear, I think, in, Two, oh, season two, it will consist of seven episodes and will be released in 2019. That's next year. David E. Kelly remains aboard the writing scene. Blah, 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 blah. Streep, a three time Academy Award winner, will play Mary Louise Wright, the mother of Alexander Skarsgård's character, Perry. This is a rare TV appearance for Streep. Do you know what else she appeared in? Well, she made an HBO uh, picture once before when she was in Angels in America winning her an Emmy for her trouble. You know, this woman should not be allowed to be a, 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 a nominated for anything anymore. She's got enough gold sitting at home on her mantelpiece. Although she's been, I think, nominated for an Oscar 21 times, something like that, and she's only won three. So, I mean, she really sucks. Uh, anyway, uh, Vanity Fair reports she also announced back in 2016 she would star in a mysterious upcoming J.J. Abrams project called The Knicks, while new details have yet to emerge on that show, it later was reported that Streep was set to earn a staggering, for that show, $825,000 per episode. Now, that may sound staggering to you that she was going to make $825,000 per episode, but you know how much the four principals in the Big Bang Theory make each week? And, and this is for 22 episodes, or no, 24 episodes a year. They each make a million dollars an episode. So they're making more than Meryl Streep was offered to do this other series. And who knows what she's getting paid for this. But uh, uh, th those guys walk home with $24 million a year for doing Big Bang Theory. And um, I guess I should play the theme, but I've got all my music down. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Maybe, maybe I can just uh, play it from over here. Here we go. Play the obit music. There we go. Bam, bam, bam. Those are people who died, died. These are people who died, died. Mute that, Facebook. Died, died. These are people who died, died. They were my friends and they died. Yeah, well, we got somebody who's dead. And, and this is somebody maybe you've seen, okay? Uh, an actor who played one of the characters on the children's TV show Teletubbies has died. British actor Simon Shelton Barnes who played Tinky Winky, was found dead in Liverpool on January 17th. He was 52. Uh, Liverpool coroner's office said today it's investigating Barnes's death, but police say it was not suspicious. He played one of the gentle, brightly colored characters in the toddler-centric show. Oh, toddler-centric? If you weren't a child, you didn't understand what the fuck was going on there. Between 1998 and 2001... Teletubbies became such a global hit that Barnes once called it the Beatles of children's television. Barnes' Tinky Winky became the focus of a controversy. Now, do you remember this? In 1999, after evangelical preacher Jerry Falwell cited the character's purple color, triangle antenna, and handbag, de uh, declaring the character was gay. The BBC, which broadcast the show, said at the time that as far as we're concerned, Tinky Winky is simply a sweet, technological baby with a magic bag. <sighs> I remember that whole controversy. Yeah, over, and, and uh, 
Uh, at the same time, they said that they had proof or something. Somebody had proof that uh, Lincoln was um, uh, was a um, that Lincoln was uh, was gay, uh, and so we came up with a character called Tinky Lincoln. <laughs> so that was our whole thing back then. But anyway, look, I've talked enough about one thing or another, and nobody's watching anyway. Is anybody listening to this whole thing? Let me see if if they listen to my. Uh, my rant at all. Let me see how many people we have here. Uh, well, not bad. Not bad for the listening side. Maybe I'll stop doing the video thing. Maybe it's just not worth it anymore. You know? Maybe it's just a, it's just a waste of time and effort. Notice I'm wearing my, my, my plaid pants again tonight. I'm getting to be an old person. I'm wearing my baseball cap. I go down to the park. I'll feed the pigeons. You know? Things like that. Well, let me uh, turn on my uh, my Skype here, and we hope it works fine tonight. Uh, it should. Most of the time it does. You know, for as much as I would like to uh, complain about uh, uh, about Skype, uh, it, it does have a tendency to work most of the time. Uh, and if you don't know how to call, just go over to gabnet.net. Gabnet.net. And over on the right-hand side of the page, there is a whole litany. There's a whole, like, very short but sweet um, um, uh, text on how to do this. See, I've lost any kind of control over the, my use of the English language. Um, just, uh, you know, just do it. It, it will be the, uh, uh, you'll be the envy of the neighborhood if you call us on, on Skype. Uh, and also, it just, uh, it's a whole tutorial, and it, it, go, it takes you through it step by step, how to get it. And then there's even a call button on there, where once you get it, you can turn on your Skype, you can get it online, you can click that button, and it'll call us. You don't even have to go to the trouble of typing in a bunch of words like GabNet Live, which is our uh, ID for Skype. So, anyway, we're waiting for our first caller tonight. Who shall it be? Uh, I have no idea who it will be. Uh, probably nobody. And then I can call this quits and go home. Wait a minute, I am home. That's a horrible thing. And, you know, I loved the days when I used to get up in the morning and go somewhere. It just, it just was a better way to do a show. Uh, you know, and you had to put your clothes on. Here, I'm in my pajamas for crying out loud, you know. But anyway, uh, we're waiting for the first caller. We're waiting for the first caller. Um, where's Phil? Usually he's the first one to call. Or that other guy who isn't going to call now. Uh, hmm. Let me see here. Well, what, can, what else can I, well, I can read some other stuff, I guess, you know, while I'm waiting for people to call. I do have us online, don't I? Yes, of course I do. Uh, let me see here. Where are we? Um, oh, um, this is kind of interesting. Uh, Scripps, uh, E.W. Scripps, announced comprehensive restructuring today that will include the selling off of 34 radio stations. Now, they own TV stations as well, and they're not getting rid of the TV stations. They're just getting rid of the radio stations. Why are they getting rid of the radio stations? Well, they've gone through a restructuring, I guess, financially. And uh, as part of this restructuring, I think they've decided that uh, uh, radio isn't a good bet anymore. And let's sell all the radio stations. So they're selling the radio stations. And uh, who knows what, how much they want for them. But I don't have it in my pocket at the moment. But I'm sure that Phil does because he can, wa he can, he can waste his money on giant printers and computers that he doesn't need. Hey. You know. Yeah. What's life about? You know, my father years ago, I, I, I thought about your little computer you bought, right? My father years ago was incensed at Jack Benny because he worked with Benny. Yeah. And he was incensed at Jack Benny because he, he on stage, when he would come out and play the violin ostensibly very badly as a joke, that was a Stradivarius. A Stradivarius, in case people don't know, is maybe the most... Million dollars more sometimes. Well, now. Uh, yeah. Back then, probably not as much. Uh... And my father was always upset that it, that violin was not in the hands of somebody who could really play it. And that's how I feel about your computer. Couldn't Jack Benny play the violin uh, well? You know, He played it better than he played it as a joke, but he didn't play it well enough to be a respected concert violinist. 
Although yeah. he did do concerts. He really? did concerts to raise money for charity. Uh, oh. But, uh, but uh, and, and supposedly he, he was okay, you know. Well, and Mr. Stradivarius was happy he was able to sell another violin. No, he was dead. He was long dead. <laughs> oh, come on. That's, that's the only the reason they were worth that much is because he was dead and he wasn't going to make any more. Yeah. Uh, but they're making them in China now. Yeah. Stradivari. No, they, uh, they, but, no, they can't make Stradivari. Stradivari, when he was alive, made violins. When he died, they no longer made them any longer. They could make, yeah. make ones that were in his style or whatever, but they couldn't make Stradivarius violins. They got Stradivarius is like they just fell off the back of the truck. No, no, not really, not really. They're they're they are a rare commodity. Yeah, well, I know. Uh, hey, I watched your play TV, mm -hmm. and or at least half of it. Well, you and could only watch I, half of it because that's all I put. That's all I was playing this well, afternoon. I, the the amount of time that was there, yeah. I watched about half, and then I strummed through the rest of it. And yeah. you know what I noticed. You have a, other than you've lost a little weight, your beard is a little grayer, and you have a little less hair because you cut it shorter. Mm -hmm. There was no difference between that show and what you're doing now. The complaints were there, the <laughs> medical issues, the, 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 well, the issues over uh, technology, and, uh, yeah. and you know, the only, and Bubbles was there. The only difference was no panel. <laughs> it was, and it looks at the rate we're going. We're not going to have a panel tonight, anyway. So yeah. Uh, you know, eventually, maybe uh, you know. I heard your uh, your intro uh, about uh, last night on Jack's show. Is that why you didn't post Jack's show be uh, I, I earlier? Po I, po I posted his show. Oh, I, I was looking for it this morning, uh, and I didn't see it. Uh, oh, so wait a minute. Uh, well, you didn't, it's there you now, didn't I see think. it. It was. Yeah, it was. It, it, it was. Yes, it, it was this morning. It was there from, uh, I don't know, it's been there ever since uh, last night. Yeah, okay. So well, let me make uh, sure that it, that it plays here, uh, just to let you know. Uh, it, um, it, it, the date wasn't listed uh, no, this morning, fine. and then all of a sudden no, it appeared. No, maybe it's had fine. To you made, oh, you didn't refresh. Well, maybe, you know. That's I'm, what I'm you didn't refresh. No, it, it <laughs> plays okay. Anyway, yeah. so anyway, and there's nobody watching the TV. I may as well turn it off. You well, know. you know, people people watch it afterwards uh i guess you could always post it afterwards does it make it easier for you if you don't uh if you don't have it running yeah either way you know but i mean it's a little daunting to see it live and then see you look up there and see only 10 people are watching you know uh, it's it's a different medium but uh you know i noticed uh, you, you, the uh but i, I got i got over th i got over 300 watching the show when i ran it live this afternoon that old show so well, I maybe should run shows from you know twenty years ago, and I'm being in good shape. Well, I, I don't I don't know why. But I, you know I do know why. It was unique. Uh, you were doing something that uh, uh, I, I I didn't even know existed in 1999 on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I uh, you know if uh, it, it it was it was you know I watched it. Yeah. And or at least most of it. Right. Right, but uh, you know, I was just in. in uh, I was. Uh, it was fun to see that the topics have not changed at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, doesn't look like anybody else is going to call tonight. Oh, here comes Jeff. I see Jeff coming online. So all right, might have. Yeah. Might He's have. He's not going to give you a break, huh? <laughs> He won't give you a break. You'll hang up on me, but not Jeff. <laughs> uh, no, I don't hang up. I hang hung up on you once. I think because. Wow. You know, people, You everybody's going to hang up on you at least once. Yeah. <laughs> you know, hello, Jeff. How are you? Are you there, Jeff? It took me a long time to. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can, can you hear me now? Yeah. You kind of break up a little bit every now and then. I don't know. Something with the. Uh, do you use Wi Fi in your house? Is that what you're using? Yes. Maybe yeah. if you moved your computer somewhere else it would work better i don't know but could you be. know or i always suggest to people and i know to a lot of you this sounds like a difficult thing but if you hardwire there's nothing like hardwiring you know that's true uh because wi-fi will always kind of like jitter and do all kinds of things mm -hmm. um although now that i've got this 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 monster of 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 of, of feed through here this uh fios um, almost one gigabit up and down. 
Uh, I use the Wi-Fi uh, on all my TV sets now. Oh, wow. It's that good. Yeah. It's that good. It's yeah. that strong. Yeah, it's that strong. It makes it through the walls. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, wait. my my service is downstairs uh, in the basement, uh -huh. which is and ex exactly on the opposite end of where I am. Oh well, there. That's a good. Re then you're getting exceptional Wi-Fi for the considering the circumstances. That's right. That's right. You know, uh, uh, but uh, yeah. But what you should do is maybe move it upstairs if you can, and uh, you know, then it like because if you because get a repeater. What? You know, no. No, repeat, I don't. Wi-Fi repeater that will. I, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, send out a stronger yeah. signal. With my, the, the, well, it's the, a good idea. Well, no, the problem with the repeaters are this. It, it, it's, it's a misnomer about the repeaters. The repeaters don't give you a stronger signal. It takes whatever signal the repeater can pick up and then blasts it out into a new area. Right. Like, I have a repeater, but I have it hardwired in the other room so that it gets a full signal. But you can have... So if he has a repeater... He has to get it close enough to the old one, which is downstairs, to be getting a good solid signal in there. Then that one will send whatever signal it's getting to the rest of the house. Well, but if it picks up a weaker... service was all the way on the other side of where he is now. Yeah. So even if he had the repeater downstairs, yeah. but put it on why the, did the, the why side they, of the house. Why did they put your modem in the basement? Who knows? That was already set up when I... Uh, Bought the house at that oh, point. Oh, I see. Because somebody had done it before. Yeah. Gee, you should call up the cable company, yell at them and say, I want this thing. You never changed it when I moved in or asked me where I wanted it and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then uh, come out to your house and, you know, put it I upstairs. I had the toughest time with the cable company today. I got new Comcast at the store. Yeah. So now I have a decent uh, up and down. It's not great, but it's mm -hmm. decent. And I can pay for more if I want it. Uh, so the old AT&T DSL, which was less than three quarters of a gig up and, uh, or, and uh, less than three down. I mean, it was awful. Uh, but in my building, because of the wires, it was the fastest I could get from them. So I call them up to cancel the service. And they send me to another department that wants to convince me to keep. I said, I don't want to talk about keeping your service. I got another service in here. Cancel it. I've had it since 2005. I, I want, you know, just cancel it. So they wanted my uh, four digit security number. I said, I don't know what the I got. You know, I got the usual suspects. You know, uh, and other than the usual suspects, I have two of I them, and I just say one, and if they say, no, that's not it, then I say the other, they go, good. It was none of the <laughs> usual suspects. I must not have been the one that set it up originally. And uh, yeah. so uh, I couldn't get the, I couldn't get them to allow me to discontinue the service. And I went up you to... You know how to discontinue the service? Don't pay paying. them. Don't pay right. them. Yeah, but then they'll put me in collections, and I, I don't want the negative FICO stuff. No, then you, then you, then you yell and scream that you tried to uh, uh, quit, and they wouldn't let you because you couldn't come up with some kind of security code that you can't remember. And all you want to do is you wanted to stop paying for the service. Well, it was a. Uh, what happened was finally after two or three phone calls and about an hour and a half of trying not to pay an eighty dollar bill, yeah. you know, it cost me more than eighty dollars and lost time. But so uh, what happened was I went into the computer room and there's a little three ring binder in there that my IT guy puts everything in, and I looked in the binder and sure enough, from two thousand five, there was the SBC piece of paper that had the code on it. And, and, what, and was the code anything that you remembered? Nothing. Was that a code they gave you? No, uh, he must have done it. It was the last four digits of uh, one of the office phone numbers. Oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah well, so, I, I always do, like, you know, last four digits of a Social Security number. Or my, I don't care, folks. You can know my, my security numbers. Uh, you don't know my accounts, uh, but then eh, my birthday, things like that. You know the, the common oh, ones. Oh, oh. You know, I, I must go ahead, steal my identity. I don't mind. Go ahead. That, 
then the they had a question that I could have answered. They said, well, "What is your favorite musician?" I said, "I don't have a favorite musician." Oh yeah, then they I, give you those. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I said, "You know, is there an answer?" Yes, there's an answer. I said, "Well, look, I don't have a favorite musician." I said, "I do new, use the name Elvis when I go to Starbucks because if you tell them Phil, they always write Bill, but they never get Elvis wrong." So I tried Elvis. That didn't work either. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I they asked me like, who was your best friend in 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 school? That one I I can remember. And the first, who was your first car? Have, who, uh, what was for your first school you went to? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, your first. And, car and what was your mother's? What, you what was your mother's yeah. first name or middle name or whatever? A maiden name, and I yeah. and I do that because I, those I'll remember. You know, but I've had I've hit it sometimes where they've asked me a question and I never answered. Right. And I go, oh, absolutely. Well, where, where did that come from? Well, the, the, the favorite musician didn't come from me because, you know, in 2005, I don't think I listened to any music. You know, uh, <laughs> was, uh, I, I have no idea where they Well, they, they give got. you a choice of questions in most cases, you know, and uh, you can pick the question and then you pick the answer. Well, obviously, I wasn't the guy that set this up. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, well, here's what I hate about passwords, okay, folks? Let me let me gripe to you. Uh, by the way, we do have more room here on the Citizens Panel. This may be the smallest Citizens Panel of all time, but right. if it stays this way till the end of the show. Um, cool. uh, uh, and I'm sure that one guy sitting out there going, well, it's because I'm not calling. Listen, you're not, you don't <laughs> say anything anyway, so it doesn't matter whether you call or not. You know, all you do is fill up a space. Uh, but anyway, where was I? You should take some of his comments and make them into PSAs. Y yes, right. Anyway, <laughs> so here, here it was, so anyway, um, uh, passwords. When you, it's time to do a password. Okay, let's say the one that drives me nuts is Apple. Every now and then, something goes wrong, and they say, "Got to give us a new password." You know, it's time for a new password. Do this a new password. So I've got, I had a password I used for years, okay? So what I started doing was adding zeros to it. <laughs> and then, that, you know, that got to be too much. So then I came out with another one. And then they said, well, give us a new one. And I go, well, I want to go. So I give them the old one again. And they, you can't do that. You have to go back. Past five, past know. five or something. You, you can't. You can go back. You can go back past five, but you can't, but under five, you can't use that old password. And so you're coming up with capital letters, asterisks never, at the uh, end, and it, now it's gotten to the point where it used to be. I never forgot my passwords. I knew I only had two, and if I tried those two, one of them would work. Right okay. now, I've got twenty different passwords, oh, and, I've, and I've got, I've, I got to have a list for it. My two passwords, sometimes I reverse. I take one password and I use it as the, as the main thing. And then if you have to have a secondary one, like you got a username and password. So if they make me switch my, uh, my password, the username then becomes the password. The password becomes the username. And then I have to put it in once. If it doesn't work, I know I just reverse it. Uh, yeah, well, I know that there are some passwords that are ridiculous. I mean, like uh, they say, uh, I knew people did things like, you know, uppercase L, lowercase three, ba ba ba, da, da, mm -hmm. a bunch of things. You could never remember it. And I don't know how they remember it. I have a great password that my IT guy gave me on the server. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I use that password, for instance, uh, when you pay uh, employment taxes online, you have to have a password. Well, I started doing my taxes, uh, employment taxes and, and payroll in-house last year. So what happened was I used that password. Uh, then the Fed government comes back and says, you got to change it this year. So 2017, I could have that. This year, you got to change it. So my office guy changes it. And I said, well, why don't you just add the year? You know, like now it's 2018. Yeah. So just the same password mm -hmm. plus the year. Uh, so next yeah, year, we'll but you see, you do that on one, but then you do something on another, and then you do something on another. And before you know it, you've got twenty different passwords, and you've got to have a list in order to remember what the password is. I got a little book. I liked it when I had my password. It was the only one I ever used. Fuck you. Leave me alone. If I want to be hacked, let me be hacked. 
You know, don't try I to protect the me. Huh? I, I have a book with all the a little notebook with all the passwords in it. Yeah. I can't find the book. It must have fallen. <laughs> <up to death. laughs> well, I have a I have a thing called uh, Notepad or whatever on this uh, yeah. computer, and I just put them all there. Well, uh, I, yeah, I know, Notepad and I, I, I went. I, I tried to get a program called One Password, right? And and you mm -hmm. put in all your passwords and stuff like that, and then it automatically does it. Well, to begin with, Chrome will automatically put in your password if you want yeah. to. Okay, so that that that's for starters. You don't need one password, but this password one or whatever it was called was so confusing. I mean, maybe I'm just too old to get it. Rob uses it. Huh? Rob uses it. I know, yeah. but it was too complicated for me. Well, uh. These uh, I have these, two passwords. Yeah. That's all. Well, on the phone, uh, you know, when I'm traveling, I have all the airline uh, uh, things programmed into the phone. Mm -hmm. So, but if you don't use it for a month or two, you have to put in your your number and your password. Well, I don't know the numbers, and so sometimes I'm looking through emails from 2014 trying to find the air, you know, the, my airline number. Uh, finally, I, I use that notes thing and put them in there so that mm -hmm. if I have to find them again, I can. Yeah, uh, but, I, mean, but uh, I just, you know, I just, uh, if you, Jeff says, well, I only have two passwords. Just wait till Apple says you need a new one. Oh, b by the way, you can't use that yeah. one because you used to use it. And then, you know, somebody else does the same thing. Before you know it, you're up to your ass in problems. You know? Yeah, I have, I have a program that every few months it tells you you have to change the password. And uh, it's, but it, it lets me go from one to the other and then back again. In fact, I just forgot my Verizon password. I just forgot it just now. I hope I have it somewhere. <laughs> you know. Oh, did you get Verizon? What? Uh, oh, on a phone or FiOS? FiOS is Verizon. Oh, okay. Did you go? Did you still use the same AT and T account? Yeah. For the yeah. phone. Yeah. Well, Verizon gave me a better deal. They gave me unlimited. I don't have to beg anybody. I get I'm a hot spot. I'm unlimited. Yeah, I understand, but you don't get a hot spot with your phone. Yes, I do. Uh, no, not if you're on the unlimited AT and T grandfathered plan. Really? But why do yeah. I need a hot spot? Well, let's say you're sitting somewhere. You know and, something? You, uh, you find all these uses for things you're never going to use. Well, you know, you're, sometimes you're sitting I'm somewhere and you want and, uh, watch a movie. Oh, I see. And so you want to make you, you well, yeah, but you, <laughs> you go online to do that. You don't use you use somebody else's yeah, hotspot. Use somebody else's hotspot at the at the airport. Uh, the, the only reason you want a hot spot is so that if, like, Jeff and I are hanging out with you and we want to use your account, we can use you as a hot spot. Right. And I'm unlimited. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but who? Uh, you're unlimited up to a point. That whole, well, hi, my, Patrick. My, my, uh, my laptop no, computer. No, that's, that's bullshit. You're up to a point. Try going over 5,000 gigs a month. See what well, happens. You, you yet, get you get throttled back. I have an I have a Mac Pro computer. That laptop. doesn't matter. It doesn't have Wi-Fi. Uh, it doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi cellular. So I need the hotspot of the phone to make the computer get uh, online. It doesn't have what? It doesn't have. It has Wi-Fi, but it doesn't have cellular. Okay. Yeah. So, so. so if uh, you know my my iPad does, yeah. but my oh, computer. Okay. Doesn't. All right. All right. Okay. So good. So that's good. why I would uh, use the hotspot. Yeah. Of the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me next time you use it. I want to know how often you use uh, it. <laughs> yeah. I'm using the iPad a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But you know. Oh, yeah. Of course you use the iPad, and there you've got the phone, right? Right. You got the four right. G service. Uh, hi, Patrick. How are you? I'm super dandy. He's, mm. You always say that. You never say, I'm feeling like shit today, which I admire. Because if I were you, I would feel like shit today. I took a good shit. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> you want to hear the most exciting moment of my day? Sure. These guys came in to work on the toilet because there's a leak two floors down, and it seems to be coming from my toilet. So the plumbers come, pull out my entire toilet, they dig into the whatever, 
They can't find where the leak is, so the guy has to plug it from his end. So they put the toilet back in place, but they're going to have to come back next month and pull it out to finish the job. But meantime, they put the toilet back in place. Now, the, when I flush the toilet, the water only comes up to like the, the, oh, the ring in the t bottom of the toilet, right? So oh, adjust that in the back of the thing. Well, wait a minute. I didn't know that. So, I so when I take a dump, it's just lying there on porcelain, <laughs> you know? Until I flush it, and then it all comes up, and then it goes down. That's an inspection flush. Yeah. So I called. I I called. Uh, I called my uh, my super, and I said they fucked something up. And I found out what it was. I can do it myself. It's a there's a little hose, a little hose they have, and the hose right. has to go in the hole to go into this little kind of receptacle, and that's what creates the higher water in your toilet. And folks, if you've been having that problem, and I just solved it for you, send me 1995. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Lumber Alex. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I learned how to do that. But you know what's going to happen next time that happens, which will be five years from now? I'll be so addled-pated, I'll go, now how do we fix that the last time? <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, when I walk, I, I took my dog to work with me today. And, uh, it was it take so, your dog to so work day? It's bring your dog to work day. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had a walker uh, around the block. And I ask her, give me a gift. Take a, you know, give me a poopy. You know, I'm looking for poopies as gifts. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very cute. All I want her to do is poop. Yeah. Once she poops, then I know I can go back in. That's why shop. I don't have a dog. Yeah. <sighs> Cats know where to shit. You know? Uh, hey, you know, I was measuring an apartment complex uh, yesterday, uh, maybe a hundred units, and I was measuring all the hallways, and I could smell the cat poop uh, in, in in all well, of these. That's things. because smell. these people have not gotten into the new technology in cat poop. When we oh, have you this... mean that little thing that uh, that uh, Rob has? Well, no, uh, that that thing is one thing, but this was just this is the thing they brought over for uh, for Berta, the kitty. Yeah, and it is a it's a it's a it's a cat box. And you put this gravel in it, but what it's got is um, a uh, um, um, a thing in the bottom, so that when the cat goes, the pee goes into the bottom onto this pad, and and uh, all you have to do is just get rid of that, just throw that in the garbage can, and the, you scoop the poop like you always would, but that does that, and it's very very neat, and you never smell a thing, never smell a thing. I was just. Uh, thanking my blessings, I live in a multi-unit apartment building, uh, and in Walnut Creek they don't allow smoking. Uh, let me get this. My, my feet, my feet are going numb now, so I got to put this in my bag. Uh, it's just my conversation, probably. But. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, in this multi-unit apartment building, nobody smokes. It's against the law in Walnut Creek to smoke in yeah. a in, in mm -hmm. public or in an apartment house. So uh, when I'm measuring this unit. There was the stink of cigarettes. There was the stink of cat litter. I don't know how people could live like that. Well, uh, I, I used to live with, uh, I had five cats, and my house smelled just like you're talking about. There's no way to avoid it. Uh, but uh, it, it was, um, you know, um, so it, 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 it's a, that's a problem. But if you've got one cat or two cats and you've got one of these special things, there's a lot of technology now that prevents it from smelling and so on, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and plus, the, maybe the people didn't clean out the litter box. I mean, we were down oh, there every day it, doing a little scoop every day just to, you know. And this cat, I don't know. What I figure is if you don't feed the cat, they won't shit. That's my yeah. theory. Uh, didn't you have a cat that shit in your bathtub? I had one that shit in my bathtub, and uh, that I, people said, "Does that bother you?" And I said, "No, because I know where it is," you know. And and but the stupid part about this cat was, is he would shit, and then he would pretend like he was digging up the porcelain. He would like go, you know, boom, 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 and then be satisfied with that, just that he had done that. And he yeah. would also go to the other end and pee down the drain. And then I had another cat who learned how to pee in the toilet. That amazed me. Sit on the toilet. I didn't even train her. One night I walked in. She's doing it. She's, she was supposedly watching my wife every day when she would take a pee. 
And then all of a sudden one night I hear somebody peeing in the bathroom and my wife's lying next to me. I go in and, and there's nothing. I go in the next night when I hear the same sound and there's a cat sitting on the now, toilet taking a leak. The huh? cat watched your wife, but Mouse was blind. No, she wasn't at that point. Oh, but I knew where she was but, blind. But, yeah, but, but she, 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 right on the toilet. You know, I think even when she was blind, she went on the toilet. Yeah, oh, yeah, she did. Yeah. You, so you I, saw it. So I, you, I, I, you I, can tell people I'm not lying. No, no, I saw it. I was amazed. I never, I, I'd never known that cats could do that. Yeah, and uh, it, it was amazing. Then, but, no, you, but then you know what the next question was? I would get from people. Yeah, but does she shit in the toilet? And I said, you can't expect everything. You know, <laughs> yeah. come on, isn't peeing enough to make you go ooh? Well, yeah. she doesn't shit in the toilet. Well, good. I'll it's the pee I think that smells the worst. Yeah, pretty much. Well, you know. Uh, 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 shit smells pretty bad, you know. Yeah. Mine does. I know that. Sometimes it's just, you know. Uh, oh, mine doesn't stink. Well, no, because I'm on, <laughs> you know, I'm on this protein diet, so that I I eat meat a lot, and meat desiccates, and so well, that's what causes odiferous poop. Well, I I got a blood test. How are you of... liking the conversation, folks? Hey, we're the numbers are up. Yeah, let's keep go talking. To that. Let's talk. A blood test. Let's talk about I get this blood test because they're going to type me just in case something goes wrong during this operation. Mm -hmm. And all my life, I thought I was an O. Well, what I'm are not. you? I'm B positive. Are you? And yeah, and so I talked to my nutritionist, and mm -hmm. she says, well, you know, if you're B positive, that type, blood type doesn't necessarily like meat that much. And, uh, you know, and I think that I loved meat because I thought I was an O, which is uh, the, the blood type that likes meat. Wow. You know, oh. So when's and, the op when's it's, the op it's psychosomatic? When's the operation? March. I, they haven't given me an exact date yet. Yeah. Uh, they're booking March yet. Have they checked you to see that it hasn't spread or anything or uh, a couple months ago I had a bone scan and uh, a CT scan and yeah. uh, nothing. Well, nothing. I told I told you about my my wife, my ex-wife who has had pancreatic cancer or has it, you know, she was operated on it. And um, mm -hmm. she got a call the other day from the doctor, and she'd been doing the chemo, and they said, well, we better stop the chemo. And she said, why? She says, well, when you were in the hospital last week with that blood transfusion overnight, we did a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a uh, colonoscopy and a, uh, uh, what's the thing when they go down the throat? Uh, yeah, no, uh, 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 yeah, it's, um, uh, cystoscopy uh, is the other one, and that's end endo endoscopy. 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 And he, she said, he said, we looked everywhere. We have not, we cannot find a sign of cancer anywhere. Wow. Uh, so she says, for the time that's being, true. that's wonderful. She says, it could come back, you know. But right now, uh, they had me stop the uh, chemo and said, uh, you know, you you are clean. Uh, that's, now, she they, must be so happy. Well, well, here's the thing. Pancreatic cancer, in case people don't know, is maybe the most dangerous of all yes. the cancers. Maybe the, I think the second worst. I don't know what the first is. I think that's getting married. Uh, but uh, 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 it's the worst can. It's a cancer that when you get it and they say you've got it, they say, well, what can we do about it? And he says, go home and write your will. You know, say goodbye to people and right. uh, get ready to be gone in about six months. Well, First of all, in her case, they said, it doesn't look like it's large enough that we can't do a special operation on it called the Whipple procedure. And then they go in there and they carp you like a, they gut you like a carp. I mean, they take your pancreas and they take part of your spleen, and blah, blah, blah. And they did that. Okay, she was lucky that she was one of the 10% that could get this operation. Now, out of that 10%, very few percentage actually survive beyond five years. Here, she gets a diagnosis of, we can't find cancer anywhere in your body. Mm. The chances of that are so rare it's ridiculous, but she says, I'll take that diagnosis, even if it gets bad later on. She says, right now, she said, you have no idea. She said, I was crying all day. She says, I just, you know, the relief from what I've been going through. <laughs> You know, no, that's fantastic. Yeah. Now, uh, did they, uh, is this Whipple procedure? Whipple, they, Whipple, not Whipple. It's not like a ball that you. Think. I know. Or, or Mr. Whipple with the Charmin. Right. But, uh, 
you know, do they use stem cells or something no, to, no, uh, no, to no, no, no. This is an operation in which they go in to get the cancer. Okay, but they also have to remove part of the spleen and something, part of your stomach or something like that. And it, it's quite a, a it, her operation, I think, was 18 hours. All right. Because right. they've got all sorts of things they're doing now. My landlord at the store, he uh, his daughter has multiple sclerosis mm -hmm. and uh, uh, yeah, multiple sclerosis. They went to Russia and there's a guy there that does these uh, transfusions where they take the blood, they transfuse it, they scrub it, and they use stem cells to uh, put the blood back in. And, it, and it's an over a two-week procedure. And so far, uh, he's telling me that he's had some po they've had positive results. And then I know somebody else who had issues with her knee, and they use stem cells, and he, she's 85. They use stem cells. Well, do you remember, you remember when, in the very beginning, they didn't even want you to be able to use stem cells? They, they were, yeah, they that were, was a Bush thing. Yeah, they were, like, fighting against the use of stem cells, and now, they yes, they are being used a lot. I think probably well, Jeff could tell us more about that Bush than you can. Bush didn't want them uh, 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 cloning people and doing stuff like that, and uh, it, it turns out now uh, mm -hmm. they've, they've cloned a monkey. Yeah. 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 Uh, 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 Jeff, do you, do you know anything about what I'm talking about, about stem well, cells? Yeah. I mean, all of the what I call surgical procedures that didn't exist. Well, yeah, maybe they maybe exist like 20 years ago. But the answer was, don't even bother because you're just going to die mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. And, and I remember... Uh, I I knew a girl and and uh, when we were teenagers, whatever, and she had a pancreatic yeah. surgery. They took her pancreas out. Nobody even believed that that was possible. And she would tell people that, uh, and I would say, no, no, that's impossible. Nobody does that. Well, you know, I, let me give you an example of something. And now it's what well, let, let, let me let me, let me give you let me give you an example of what you're talking about. My father back in, when, what year was it? Was it uh, 63 maybe? 63 that he died, 62, somewhere around in there. He died of um, a pituitary tumor. Now, the pituitary, in case people don't know, is located, if you take the middle of your head and put a line there and then put a line through the top of your head, that's where it's located. I mean, it's in the most inaccessible place you can possibly imagine. And they couldn't operate on it. They were trying to, but they just couldn't. It, it, if, if, you, if you tried to operate on it, you would probably make the person a vegetable doing it. And he died of the pituitary tumor. Not five years, six years later, I'm dating a woman. And uh, she says, yeah, and then, yeah, blah, 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 blah. And when I was sick, and I said, oh, well, what'd you have? She says, I had a pituitary tumor. And she, I went, my father died of a pituitary tumor. She says, oh. She says, well, uh, they don't die of pituitary tumors anymore. I said, what do you mean? She says, oh, they have an operation for it. They go through the mouth to wow. get to it. And I went, my father, if he just waited, <laughs> you know, just like two, three, four years, they would have been able to save his life. Yeah. I remember that when I was a kid, my doctor died. Mm -hmm. He was like 42 years old and he had a heart attack. Yeah. I mean, no, there were no stents. There was no, there was no open heart surgery. There was nothing. My my father was one of the first 100 ever to have open heart surgery. He had uh, a bypass. Yeah. He had one bypass, uh, and uh, 10 days after the operation, he died because of blood clots. They didn't have the clotting medicine in 72 that they have today, but it was an experimental but, operation. You know, he, uh, otherwise, let's say it had worked. Wonderful. The fact that it didn't work, he would have been dead anyway, right? Well, yeah, well, uh, he said he couldn't stand the pain. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the pain that he was getting was, was, and he was a strong guy, yeah. but the, the thing was, uh, what you, what was a experimental operation in 1972 is almost like getting a tonsillectomy, uh, today. 
You yeah. Know? Yeah. No, uh, uh, quite right. I mean, it, to me, it's amazing uh, what, what we what we can do now. Uh, just 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 absolutely breathtaking. Uh, so and and I mean, even I, I imagine you've seen some pretty good medicine in your particular situation. <laughs> right, uh, Patrick? Yeah, I, I've, I've often thought that if I had the same surgery now that I had almost 15 years ago, mm -hmm. there would still be a chance of paralysis, but I bet I would have beat those odds. Uh, yeah. And, and it's just, it just the, uh, um, the advancement of, of medicine and... and Technology, I'm sure, has a lot to do with it. Um, you know, the, the, the way that it is. And, now, now um, let me ask you this. When you went in for your surgery, what were they operating on? In other words, what was it they had to accomplish that was wrong with you? I had three or four uh, vertebrae collapsing on my spinal cord. Okay. And what, it, what they were doing is cutting off the blood flow from... You know, basically, you know, from the upper half of my body to the lower half. Yeah. And I would get numbness in both of my <clears> legs <throat> and a lot of pain in my hips and my legs. Uh, if it wasn't numb, it was pain. And I was losing the ability to walk. Mm. So what they needed to do was go in and basically just kind of pull everything apart. So I've got two titanium rods in my spine and screws that hold them together mm -hmm. that keep already the vertebrae spaced appropriately. Mm -hmm. So there's no, there's no permanent damage to my spinal cord. So in the future, there is always that possibility that I could regain motion. Maybe mm -hmm. not walking, that might be a little bit too much to ask, but maybe regain motion in my legs where I can do from my brain yeah, to yeah. my legs make them what happens to the muscles after 15 years do they atrophy um well yeah but I with the exercising that I do um yeah. I my legs just stay in one position yeah I mean I can straighten them out as I need to and like I'm sitting in a chair they're bent yeah. But when I'm down in bed, they stay straight and out, and when I get dressed, yeah. I can I lie down. So. Well, I have yeah. numbness in my feet, and I, I've been told by my doctor. I mentioned it to my doctor, and he just pointed to my back and said, "It's something back there that's you know, you know that uh, as you get older, uh, yeah. your spine does things and so on." But my legs don't get numb or anything. Just my, Ray just my feet. Ray uh, wrote me, and he gave me the recommendation for a. Uh, a chiropractor that does special work in the, uh, is it the cervical? Uh, mm -hmm. That's uh, part of the neck? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, yeah, so, because I have terrible pain, it comes over the top of the head. I can't, uh, my range well, of motion. Well, I, I know is, that pain, we get it when you call. I know, my range of motion is very, very limited, and it's even hard for me to uh, to look and see if there's, uh, to pass another car to, to look out the window or to back up. Mm -hmm. I, I use mirrors. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I'm going to this guy next week uh, who supposedly uh, just specializes in that stuff, and it was Ray Renati that turned me on to him. Yeah, well, good. Good. Yeah. I've got to do something about these numb feet, though. I probably have to go to a neurologist. There, there must be some medicine or something, you know. Either that, no, or they could operate on me, and you. I could wind up in a wheelchair, you know. Uh, but hey, a chiropractor can help those kinds of things just by aligning the spine so that it's not putting the pressure on those nerves. Well, that maybe maybe I'll give that a try. I don't know, but you know, you know it's getting it, it, it's, it's getting it's ridiculous. It only happens twice. when I'm sitting yeah. down for a long amount of time. Yeah. And when I'm lying down, uh, it's your sciatic it, nerve. It could be the sciatic nerve. Uh, I mean, it's 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 also numb the rest of the day when I walk, but it's less so. In other words, it's well, affected that's by sitting. One of the and lying things down. that chiropractors are pretty successful with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, maybe I should. I I don't know. Yes. I, yes, yes, Jeff. Uh, I have a question for Patrick. Do you uh, have special exercises that you do when you're in the wheelchair? Um, no, not nothing. 
I run. I mean, that that's one thing that I do, and, and it's for my cardio. So it's all upper body, and it's it, this sort of motion. Yeah. Um, and then I stand using a walker, and oh, I cool. and I use a gate belt to lock my knees so that they don't buckle. And then I, I stand, um, and then just the, the normal transferring that I do, uh, it, it moves my legs to where, you know, I got to get to a standing or a semi-standing position and, and things like that. And when I get dressed, um, I can't lift my legs up like you can to put your shoes on, that sort of thing. So I have a um, it's leg lifter. It's basically a cloth that I'll loop around my foot and lift my leg up on a table at actually at the same height of the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting with my legs straight out, and then I'll do um, some toe touching exercises, that sort of thing, before I get dressed. So and then you know that that's how I learn to keep my leg from you know some people who are paraplegic their legs are constantly bent no matter what they do. well i've i've managed to avoid that right. just for what i do so it's nothing special that anybody pointed out it's just things that i kind of picked up along the way oh, that's good that's terrific uh so anyway uh, so anyway i got numb feet that's that's my uh, so I, I'm. I got to be careful about. I guess I could have it operated on, and get, I don't think you need that, huh? I don't think you need that. I, I don't know, but I've got to do something about I, it. A lot simpler than 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 that. Yeah. Uh, um, but let me go back to the story I talked about earlier. Let's try and get some kind of topic going here. I always like when we have more people because it's more of a round robin going, but. Uh, you know, it's just I've been a little slow tonight, and we'll leave it at that. Um, this thing about the E.W. Scripps Company, which is a, it's been a considered a, a media empire. They've got uh, television stations all around the country. Um, uh, they have decided that uh, they're going to get rid of, they're not getting rid of any of their Internet or multimedia holdings or their television holdings, but they're unloading their radio stations. Do you think this portends for the future that that uh, this company felt the thing they could get rid of were the radio stations, and and they think so? Well, obviously they think so, because I think uh, they think there's probably somebody who will buy them at this point. But you know a few years I down think, the line, there won't be. You know why I think they think so? If uh, all those stations that are owned by Clear Channel and iHeart or whatever. Uh, go on the market, their stations are going to be worth a lot less. And if they want to pick up some stations, they might as well sell the ones they have at a market rate. And then when these other ones are, uh, are, are at a fire sale, if they wanted to Let have more stations. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. In this day and age, would you buy a radio station? Uh. It depends, yeah. No, what do you mean depends? Why? Now, I'm in radio, okay? This is my business, and I wouldn't buy a radio station. I mean, if, if you were at a, a local market, you know, like in uh, Iowa somewhere where people actually listen to them, uh, you know, the farm report, the this, that, and the other thing. What is that? Is that your masturbation sign, Patrick? <laughs> no, that's the, remember, Milwaukee, our local radio station are mostly local. Yeah, yeah. But the the fact of the matter is, <laughs> Phil... Does my theory hold any water? That local uh, will listen to local? Here's the funny thing. Um, the the main host that we have, the, the one radio station I listen to is owned by iHeart Media. Yeah. And the afternoon host, the mid-afternoon host, or I should say the drive host, the afternoon host, the um, mid-morning host and then the morning drive host, they all make fun of the fact that iHeart is on the brink of going under, right. where it's got no money. And I thought it was interesting that they are not pretending that everything's fine. You know, so 
you know, I, I don't know that I would pay anything, Phil. I, I think if you were going to buy one, I would say, like where I'm at, would be a good one because it is all local talent except for Rush and Sean Hannity, and that's it. Everything else is local, and on the weekend, yeah. it's all local. Okay, uh, okay, but let me people. let me throw this into the into the into the mix. You cannot make money off owning one radio station in a market anymore. It wasn't like the old days where you owned one radio station and it made a certain amount of money and you lived on it and it made a profit, okay? Today, you've got to own like five radio stations in a market and make consider that you're making your money off the entire cluster, mm -hmm. all right? So if you're like one individual like uh, Phil here who says, I'm going to buy a radio station. And he thinks he's going to be able to compete with these clusters. You can't. You well, really I, can't. I don't, you know, that's like saying I'll make more money uh, on volume, but I'll lose money on the individual. Yeah, but, but you see, but that, but it's a way. It, 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 it's 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 cost effective. It's cost effective to have five stations. In San you're Francisco, running. you've got some stations. They're all owned by the same group i believe or most of them like kgo and K kgo is owned by cumulus by the way who's been delisted from the stock exchange they're doing right. so badly uh another majority of the stations you've got there iheart radio yes uh, i understand about seven of those stations they, there they want some stations to do poorly no they so do it, they the do. other ones reflect much they better do, but they still the here's the here's the point i make trying to make phil is that you can't own one radio station and make it profitable. Now, if Patrick is going to probably say those stations he listens to are singular and not owned by anybody else, or are they no. part of a chain? The iHeart, um, there are four or five radio stations in the building. Um, one of them is a country station. Yep. One of them is a, quote, OB station. One is a modern whatever the fuck you listen to today station. And then the other is R&B and uh, that sort of stuff. But again, those other music-oriented uh, stations that are owned with the AM talk radio station, yeah. the majority of the DJs and the programming are all local talent. Again, they may have a show at night that's a national, you know, uh, well, it doesn't even have to be national. It could be something we call we call voice tracking. That somebody yeah. in New York is voice tracking a show for your market. Right. Yeah. But if you listen to it during the day, uh, the mornings and all of that, the morning shows, and it, it's all local talent. Most morning so shows, most morning shows in most markets are local. Uh, yeah. And that's about the only thing that's local. I mean, there's some stations where they're not even local at all. But several years ago, for instance, uh, let me let me mention KGO in San Francisco recently owned by Cumulus as a cut 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 cutting cut cost a cost cutting measure uh, fired uh, didn't fire but uh, let go of uh, Ron Owens who's been there at to KGO for what eight thousand years and Brian uh, Copeland and yeah. I think one other person and they're getting rid of them. You know what they're replacing them with? They're people from L.A. Their shows from L.A. In other words, no cost to them, all right? Tr and that's what's going on throughout the entire business. Now, the fact that you may in your market have, a, have talk shows that are all local is to say that you're, you're one of the few markets left where this happens on a, on a large basis. Most stations in the country that are talk stations have one local show, and then all the others are syndicated. And that local show is usually in the morning because, you know, it can talk to the market. Yes, Patrick. Um, in fact, it just happened uh, maybe about five years ago. Glenn Beck was on the station that I listened to, the AM station. Mm -hmm. And his ratings were so low in our market that they put um, one of the talent that they have from a um, – a radio station that's owned by iHeartMedia in Madison, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. um, as one of the Milwaukee local hosts, because she is known in both markets anyway, so he was replaced by her. So we've gotten rid of 
national talent yeah. in favor of local. Well, you know, it, San Francisco was a market once where you couldn't imagine uh, talk shows coming from anywhere but the city itself. Uh, KGO, every single show on that station was a local show. And now almost every show on that station is not a local show, and they're number 30 in the market or number 20 in the market, some abysmal place in San the market. San Francisco used to be the five, uh, n- number five in the market, uh, you know, uh, behind Chicago, New York, and L.A. Number four. Number four? Yeah. Number four. Yeah. And uh, it still you know, is. my friend who did the, uh, uh, he was PD for country music uh, stations, he, he said that the thing about country music that uh, Patrick had mentioned is that their listeners are more loyal and they don't go from station to station uh, that they because they're you know they're listening to that type of station so it was a more profitable uh, uh, station because it, it kept their listeners yeah. yeah. But anyway, it, what I'm saying is is that I don't think I would buy a radio station because, to begin with, you can't do it with just one in a market. And secondly, if you come in uh, uh, and buy one, uh, you've got to you know you got to pay for the upkeep on that. You've got to hire the staff, and you've got to run that station with a sales department. All these things, by the way, if you have a sales department and you have one radio station, uh, that is a lot more expensive for you than to have five radio stations with the same stale sales staff. It's like having one carpet store and advertising yeah, in the exactly. area. Have eight stores, the same ad. Yes, because the whole world thing. does come down to selling carpet, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, everything's got, <laughs> everything's got carpet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Without yeah. carpet, the world would not be walking. Yeah. What is that noise? Is your wife cutting up uh, onions or something? I. It's my wife. Yeah. What? She's chopping something. What are you chopping? Carrots. 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 Okay. It sounded like some kind of vegetable that was resistant. Yeah. You got to yeah. get it a Vegematic. You know? <laughs> Boom. One thing. They're all chopped. But, it, an but, but, you know, all I'm saying is this is a, <laughs> this is, this is a, a really a, a omen uh, about radio and about where its place in, in, in is these days. Uh, and what's worse, another reason not to buy a radio station is all these people listening to these radio stations are going to be dead soon. And it's who's going to follow them? All the youngsters who are getting older, okay? And what are they going to listen to? They're not listening to radio now. Yeah, I guess they listen to the internet. You know, they're listening to the internet, and and, and uh, uh, they they haven't been trained to listen to radio. Hell, I mean, I grew up on radio. Well, Trump is going to save uh, save the uh, radio stations. How's and that? The way he's going to do it. Uh, yeah. is with his net neutrality. Uh, you, you're gonna. It's gonna cost so much to listen to a podcast. <laughs> you'll want to listen to the free radio. It'll drive them all back to radio. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know if Trump's gonna be there very long. Himself. Uh, heard that? Yeah. Did you, this, uh, see, uh, the, the, the way it, it, well, we haven't gotten to that elephant in the room. But the fact is that I, for the first time today, I looked at girlfriend and I said, I think he's been had. I think. Yeah. I think he's. He's gonna be. He's gonna have to leave office. What you mean, the obstruction stuff yep. and so forth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Because he didn't know what he was doing. Did he? He didn't testify. Yet. No. no. And he first he says I'm going to testify, but then it drove his lawyers nuts because he never consulted them. Right. So now they're coming back and saying, "Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We didn't say he was going to testify." All right trying to set some kind of ground rules and whatever. Supposedly, the one thing you don't want to be for Donald Trump is a lawyer because he doesn't, <laughs> because he doesn't listen to you. That's supposedly the reputation he's got. He has lawyers. He doesn't listen to them. Well, in this case, you got to listen to him. And he went out and batted his chops a day or so ago saying, oh, yeah, we're gonna, I'm going to uh, t- sit down with Mueller and I'll, I'll testify under oath. Come on, have at it thinking he could maybe make that boast but never have to live up to it but the fact is he has to live up to it now and they are go- they've got something on him they've got they've got something bon Ami wouldn't he wash can, off he can make them submit their questions ahead no, of time no 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 he do- they don't do not have to there is no what? rule to that what 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 legal system are you working in phil well i didn't think he had a testify no, no, no. 
he well he doesn't have to testify so then uh everything else that people are saying which pre can be substantiated will be used to convict him rather well, than his own story well, it says here that he's a rock star at davos just he's not a rock star at davos i saw that there were certain there were certain world leaders who wouldn't even talk to him and uh, his his approval rating went to 45 percent when okay uh, in, in what in what poll phil i'm looking now i was just looking at the headline for you oh where's the headline from uh, yeah. the daily mail oh yeah yeah it's Make british sure. british right-wing newspaper yeah uh what according to my free lawyer who lives next door here yeah she said that if he doesn't answer the questions then they're going to suspend, you know, they're going to take him up and he's going to have to suspend himself. He's going to have to speak. Yeah. He's going to have to answer all those questions. Not yeah. What I said. Not what I said. What did she say? Not what I said. I say it again. Doesn't go when Mueller calls him. They will subpoena him. Suspend. Oh, subpoena him. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And if he still doesn't talk, they'll be held in contempt of court. Ah. Contempt of court. Yeah. Not make him. Excuse me, my pants are riding up on me. Uh, I've been sitting too long tonight. Um, uh, so basically, I think there's a good shot that uh, he's going to get uh, a contempt. You know, he's, he, there's going to be something there that's going to drive him out of office. I, I just think it's all the stars are aligning that way now. Well, Maybe he'll testify, and he just, and he won't uh, step on his dick. Oh, he's, uh, come on, Phil! There, there, he's an expert at it. Mueller is waiting to be able to talk to him under oath because he knows he will step on his dick. Yes, well, Patrick. What hoping he'll do is say something that contradicts something else that he said, and they'll uh, try to get him on uh, per uh, perjury, like they did Clinton. Patrick. Patrick. Be careful what you. What you're wishing for? Yeah. From this standpoint, remember, none of us, none of us, ever thought he would make it in the office. So don't count your chicken before they hatch. Um, that he's gonna just, you know what, Alex? Do what I've been doing the last year. Just roll with it. Whatever's going on, I haven't lost a wink of sleep over any of this shit. Me neither. And if, if he. He has to leave office, then he has to leave office. But don't get your hopes up because it's going to well, be a oh, nightmare. You, oh, you know where I don't have my hopes up? If we get him out of office, let's say obstruction, obstruction of justice happens. He's out of office. Guess who's in office? Pence. Yeah, somebody that's not going to tweet. And somebody that's actually going to look presidential anywhere he goes. You may not agree with him politically, but at least he's going to look the part and it ties fit and he doesn't he, his hair doesn't look fake and you know i mean you got to look at the positives of pence and and he was a talk show host and you see that there's a future for yeah, he was guys not, he in was, radio no, he, oh, oh pence was a talk show host yeah yeah, yeah. apparently not know. a very good one otherwise he'd still be a talk show host yeah well the peter principle yeah what kind of show did he have? A talk show. Uh, <laughs> it was probably a right wing talk show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the tr the trouble the trouble with Pence that I have with him is his religious zeal, uh, because that that bothers me. I, I don't want anybody in office who has li a large amount of religious zeal. You know. So. Yeah, but he may he may surprise you in that. That's not going to be the way he governs, too. I mean, you know, he may be able to leave that at the door and just govern it according to, you know, whatever the, the law is. Yeah. They religion. didn't want John Kennedy because he was a Catholic. They didn't think he could govern uh, because he was a Catholic. I thought, I thought that uh, Trump wasn't going to go to Davos. Did he? Uh, no, Melania didn't go. No. She went down to Mar-a-Lago. No, no, but uh, there, there was, originally he originally he wasn't going to go, right? Well, he wasn't going to go because the government had uh, the shutdown, and uh, he wasn't going to leave no, during I, the shutdown. I, I think he was afraid to go. 
No, uh, you know, it's, it says here, uh, we love you. Trump greets uh, uh, May in Davos. Uh, May is Theresa May from uh, uh, the Prime Minister. She doesn't love him. She just want, has to deal with him. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, I think he's doing a good thing with the Palestinians, too. Oh, really? He's, he's forcing their hand. If you think about it, what he's basically doing is saying, the longer you procrastinate in coming up with a peace process, the more it's going to cost you. Uh, now it's cost them uh, Jerusalem. Uh, next how's it'll cost it, them how's something. How's it cost them Jerusalem? It doesn't cost them Jerusalem. Because it's no longer on the table with the United States as a uh, potential bargaining chip for peace. But they're still there. Or, uh, they still are in Jerusalem. It, yes, but it was part of. Uh, uh, it wasn't part of Israel. Uh, part uh, Phil, Jerusalem Phil, was split Phil, in half. Phil, like this, th this whole notion is to suck Benjamin Netanyahu's dick. Uh, I, I think that what he's trying to do is force uh, a boss to come to the table. And, and uh, you see, before the hey, United look, States... Hey, you know, you know what you're doing? You know what you're doing? Money. You're making the big mistake and that you think that Donald Trump is this great negotiator when really he was a terrible negotiator. So far, so far, uh, the North Koreans are participating in the Olympics in South Korea. It has Korea. nothing to do with I his position so. against them. All right. And now he's done a number of things, but if, if his strategy is what I think it is in, in Israel, uh, by uh, what's happened over the years is uh, the Palestinians has been, have been able to get money from the United States uh, without having to have the peace. Now what he's doing is he said, look, I'm not going to send you any more money, number one, until you get serious. And number two... Uh, He's he's doing things that are f going to force their hand to come to the p to the peace table before they lose do think, all. Do you think? Do you think deep down he even considers any of this? I you think really, so. Do you really believe this is a thinking, breathing president? This this guy. He have wants you have you looked have you looked at his be, fucking have you looked at his fucking desk? Yeah, it's have you clean, looked at it? But, yeah, no, there's nothing on it. Right, because it's a ceremonial desk that we because see. Because he's not doing any work. <laughs> he doesn't like being in the Oval Office. He likes to be upstairs watching Fox and Friends. That's where his desk is. But, you know, what I see happening is, is this is this guy wants to uh, be the guy that has peace in the Middle East. And I see it There hasn't been a like, single president in the last three quarters of a century or since that whole problem started in that part of the world that didn't want some kind of peace process in that part of the world and thought they were the one who could do it. And they, they all did, failed. Every one of them. Did the same thing over and over and expected a different result. What Nobody was that? What do they, what do they do over and over again? Uh, they try to bring them to a table so they could discuss, but, no one's cut off the money to the Palestinians. It's the Palestinians that don't want peace. They want they want the annihilation of Israel. Okay. They want Israel to be driven into the Red Sea, and uh, and the Mediterranean. They do not want peace with Israel. Uh, it's 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 part of their uh, uh, their constitution. You know, they, they, it's they, not part they, of their constitution, yeah, Phil. Hamas. Hamas, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> says that they won't recognize Israel. That, well, uh, that isn't that, that isn't that we're going to push them into well, the sea. That's is, saying we're not going to recognize them. Of course, know, you're not going to recognize. Of course, you're not going to recognize them, Phil. They oh. want the destruction of Israel. Yeah. Uh, stop showing off your shorts. No, I'm, I, no, I don't want to. But my, my <laughs> underpants are riding up on me, and they're they're hurting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's just trying to show his junk on TV. I have such an enormous <laughs> schwanz that you know I can't yeah. sit comfortably. So uh, anyway. Uh, what the what the situation is is he's the first guy that have that has uh, oh, really? pushed the Palestinians yeah. Yeah. to do anything uh, other than what, just what, 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 have the, what have the Palestinians done? Nothing. Well, no. What are they doing now with all this pushing? Well, they're 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 complaining. No, but, no. But what are they doing? Well, they're seeing that they're losing uh, valuable assets that are no they'll longer get the, part of they'll the get the assets they get the assets from somewhere else. Well. They might get it from the West Bank. They might but, get it from. They might get it from Iran. No, no, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about uh, Golan Heights, West Bank, Jerusalem. I'm talking about the land. Oh, good. Then there'll be another war over there. Well, not necessarily. 
what uh, what the situation is. If they're not getting money from the United States, yes, I'm sure they're getting money from Iran. I'm sure they're getting money from other uh, terrorist groups. But uh, Iran is not a terrorist group. Well, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's been a, 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 a group that has paid for terrorism, Hamas, uh, and, uh, and and other well, if terrorist you commis- groups. If you, if you consider Hamas terrorist, uh, Hamas aren't terrorists in the traditional sense. Not yeah, a lot, not, not the, in the bombs not, that they not, lobbed not in into the, no, the that's, that's, that's not terrorism? That's, that's war. No, 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 they're not at war. That's war. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, how it, about how about it, the fact that uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Have you seen how many how many missiles have been lobbed into the into uh, into Hamas? Only in retaliation. Oh, for, really? Uh, you, know how many, you know how many and you know how many children and babies it's killed? Yeah. Do you, where do these missiles come from? A thousand children and babies and and, and adults, if you believe their uh, press, but. Uh, if, oh, I don't know. know. I've seen a lot of them being held in people's arms as they take them off to get buried. Yeah, they because they're using them as human shields. These human shields. How do you? Do you uh, think this this isn't is a question. This is it. Isn't a question bumps? of human shields. It's a question that the Israel has been decimating some of these areas and uh, should be held accountable for the for the death of uh, the annihilation of the populations in those when areas. You have a population that goes in and stabs uh, Israeli citizens uh, at bus stops. Uh, no, no you're, now, you, homes, now you're talking about so in, individual no lone actors. What you're talking about are people who, who do these things uh, uh, on a day-to-day basis, but we're not talking, we're talking about when you lob bombs on human populations in which you have no respect for, I mean, hospitals are decimated, you know, and the Israelis have never been called to account for any of that. It was in retaliation. No, that, no, and, and the stuff they lobbed because into Israel was in are. retaliation. That That's where the missiles are because the Hamas is using them as, and Hezbollah, they're using them as human shields. Well, I guess the Israelis are using and, using and, Tel Aviv and as a human are shield. Allowing it. What? And and the and the uh, Palestinians are allowing it. You know, uh, uh, ISIS did the same thing in the, in Iraq. They used the citizens as human shields. Phil, you have no real concept of just the whole nature of that part of the world and the problem that's been created there. I mean, the biggest problem was the UN saying Israel becomes a, the Jewish state. That was a big mistake because uh, there were a lot of people already living there who weren't Jewish. All these well, people were streaming in there who were Jewish, but the people who were there weren't, and those that were for years had gotten along very well with the, with the, with the Arabs as well. Uh, but the fact uh, is those. that when you go in and you displace an entire population, send them out into a desert where they're starving and where they're poor, because it was a wait desert a minute, let to me finish. With. No, it wasn't a desert to begin with, Phil. A desert is full of life. A desert is a living, breathing part of nature. Yeah. Okay, uh, all right. So I mean, it wasn't a desert because anybody made it a desert. They learned how to adapt to the desert because they were they were you know Bedouins and so on. And but when when this whole thing happened, where the Jews were allowed to go into Israel, uh, uh, it pushed out those people who went out basically into the desert and became very disgruntled about how they had been pushed out of their homeland. Yes, so it, Patrick. It, it brought a bunch Patrick, of uh, Patrick has of his hand up. Pan- yeah, a bunch of camp survivors, but that was not an excuse. You know, the the is, uh, Arabs in that part of the world had nothing to do with the Holocaust and should not have been yes, made to suffer it was for a it. State solution in '48, and they and the Palestinians refused to the two state solution. Well, because they felt they were there in the beginning, like for two for th- ten thousand years. Yes, then Patrick. Let, cards, pa- right? let Patrick say something. He's right, his hand raised so long he's losing. The uh, thing is, uh, Alex, United Nations, they're the ones who sent the refugees, so to speak, from Germany and Poland out of the camps into Israel. Mm-hmm. And nobody else wanted them. A lot of those same Jews wanted to go back to Eastern Europe. They wanted to go back to their old homeland. United States refused them. So 
when they were given the opportunity to go to Israel, um, you know, yes, you can talk about the Zionists saying that's the Jewish homeland, but from everything that I've read, I don't know that there was really a choice at that point in 48, uh, you know, and, well, I, I shouldn't say that, I should say 46, 47, when they were sent there. They they weren't given the option. Well, they weren't. They weren't. No, they weren't. They weren't sent there. They went there. They they boarded boats and they headed for for Haifa Harbor. Okay, that was yeah. plain and what simple. Women, let me boats. finish. Let me finish, Phil. Let me finish. They they and their destination was Haifa Harbor. The the truth of the matter is that if anybody should have been made to suffer for the Holocaust, it should have been Germany, Austria, one of those countries there, and that should have been partitioned off as the Jewish homeland. It certainly would have been more suited to them because they had lived there all their lives. Mm -hmm. But we didn't do that. Wait a minute. We didn't do that. Instead, we, they went down there and in a way kind of bullied them. So, I mean, they, all of a sudden you've got tens of thousands of Jews down there wanting to get into Israel. What's the United Nations going to do? What's going to be the answer? You can't tell them to take the boats back because they probably don't have any fuel left. I mean, it was well, a it was a terrible, terrible situation, uh, which was well, forced on the them. The English trying to keep those Jews on the boats in Haifa Harbor. I don't, I don't think so. No, in that movie Exodus or whatever it was. Uh, after British, the, sorry, yeah, the British, the British kept them on there, and what they did is they staged a, uh, a uh, hunger strike, and that that and that was seven hundred people on there. Yeah. The thing is, Alex. You can say that they bullied their way in. Where the hell else were they supposed to go? Because the French, well, the, the, only, the French, yeah. the American, the British, and the Soviet Union, they were dividing up uh, Western Europe as they wanted to. And they should have partitioned and, part of that off. Uh, they should have partitioned part of that off as the Jewish state. Yeah, but they didn't. And the sitting bitch about the Jews in Israel now is ridiculous because. I look at the Jews in Israel right now, it's the same as what you're saying about the Palestinian, where, okay, this is all we've known now for the last, since 1946, 47, and now you want to push us out, well, fuck you. So you've got two groups of people yeah. who lay claim yeah. to that area. Well, here, here the, for, to begin with, you know, we have, to, we have to go back to, uh, to Balfour who wasn't even a Jew, who started this whole notion that the Jews should have a homeland in Israel. Prior to that, you know, Balfour went and started making <clears throat> speeches and things like that in the area. And before that, the Jews, the Arabs, got along beautifully, and they had gotten along beautifully for two... Shut up, Phil. Don't give me that look. Come I'm on. Telling you, Wait, you, there you, was a guy in, Palestinia, in Palestine called the Mufti, and back in the 1920s, the they they were launching. Uh, uh, all sorts and of and when did you, when did you Jews. think when do you think Balfour was making his declaration? That's why. Uh, no, but 1920 actually. Okay, but uh, the, so this guy, the the Mufti, uh, even no, got in cahoots no, with no, Hitler. Because, no, because no, because because they the were get because they didn't like what the what the, what the Balfour was doing. They didn't like the attitude that was was happening there, and it drove a wedge between the Jews and the Arab population in the area. Uh, you don't think English were the ones that drove the wedge? And oh, the yes, Jews Balfour, Balfour, Balfour literally lit the match. Okay. Uh, up until then, everything was fine. You know, in fact, the Jews that who lived in Israel didn't think so much of themselves as Jews. I think they had a name for them. Uh, and they, uh, huh? Sephardic? No, no, no. Uh, but it, but it, the point is, is that that uh, but before and before um, um, Zionism and Theodore Herzl, no one ever considered the idea of Israel as a homeland. Uh, and and uh, Herzl proposed Zionism. And part of Zionism was, we go back to Israel. Well, we left it 2,000 years earlier. I don't know when you can claim you're going back somewhere, you know? Yes, uh, yes, Patrick. A, well, I would assume everyone here is familiar with Leon Uris. Yeah, he wrote as, as, Exodus. As an yeah. Yeah. All right, well, he'd, he'd written a number of books, and the book that I would suggest Phil read so that you do understand that the Arabs and the Jews did get along at one point 
is the Hajj. And it's all about the relationship that they had prior to all of this bullshit that happened. Uh, I think it was, it was prior to World War One, and it, it's all of the history. And, and it does shit. Everybody got along. I mean, the Jews and, and, and Arab, they were... They were neighbors. They were helping each other. It was a, it was very similar to what happened here in the United States with what we you know we celebrate Thanksgiving. Native Americans helped the pilgrims learn how to work the land, that sort of thing. It was uh, the same. The sort Jews of- the Jews got along with the Arabs even in Spain eight hundred years when uh, Spain was under Moroccan uh, 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 Muslim. Uh, uh, they conquered it. Uh, and and they live together, but these influences we can't look at what happened uh, a yeah. thousand years ago and then say to ourselves that, that no. We can all I'm saying is, is that the the, the the solution of 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 Israel, uh, it, it was a the whole thing created a powder keg. Which if you don't think it was one hell of a powder keg, it's a powder keg that has existed since 1948. It's never well, been solved. Prior to that. Uh, the the Mufti of Palestine. Uh, I don't knew, give a shit Hitler about the Mufti. Do, the but, Mufti but, came but, after 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 uh, after. Uh, there were Muftis uh, before this last one. Uh, that uh, uh, a Mufti and, to begin the, with couldn't have anything one. couldn't have anything to do with Hitler till about 1930, I think. Because no, this, was the, this was during the Holocaust. Uh, this was oh, at, during the war. During the war. He, oh well, the Mufti. Yeah. That's later on. That's after after the whole thing with uh, with Balfour and so on. That's yeah, af- that's before, after the bad blood. Had, that's after the bad blood had been created. But it was before forty eight. And uh, no, but what does uh, that have to do with it? I'm, well, you're t- I'm t- you, you to don't understand what I'm Jews saying have- is is that if it weren't for Balfour, the, this the 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 match of this powder keg would not have been lit. Okay, uh, I, I think that's too simplistic. And to simply say that because you heard somewhere the Mufti talked to Hitler, if that's your only piece of knowledge about the whole area, you're totally. I read a book about it. Huh? I read a book about. What it. was the book? Uh, 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 Hitler's Mufti: The Axis of Evil. I see. Okay, uh, and uh, one, a one-sided book, you will hmm. admit. Well, it was. It didn't. It didn't start that way. It was. Yeah. Uh, uh, some educators Wait a minute. Saw the, the, the Mufti that Hitler's a, a evil. I think that, that the title evil. itself seems to be pre- before you even open up the leaf first page of the book, you pretty well know what you're going to get inside. Yeah, well, you got you got the you got Jeff, a, a very Jeff uh, uh, interesting okay. perspective. I, Jeff, you want to jump in here? On yes. Anything? Oh, why not? Uh, I, I look at this a little bit differently. I, I think about 1946. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's all these Jews who really were in a whole bunch of European, Western European countries, Germany, part of Russia, part of Greece, whatever, yeah. uh, Romania, whatever. Th- they wanted to get out, <laughs> okay? They had a lot of bad experience for the last 10 years, and they wanted to go out. And the best place to go was called the United States. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, United the United States, States wouldn't take them. Said no. Right. Okay. A lot of them went to Argentina, of all places. However, it was still pretty expensive to get there. But they were willing to accept people in that country. And there were other countries that were willing to accept Jews. But the reality is, one of the closest ones was the Middle East. And the Middle East Mm -hmm. was open, so to speak. And it was not as, let's say, as managed. Yeah. And there were enough Jews in there at the beginning to help them in. Yeah. Well, I, I know, I, and I and I think you're coming up with good reasons why they chose to go there. Yeah. Uh, I think, though, that uh, something could have been done to give them a, a homeland that was closer to their own homeland. You know, it I was mean, they, the it, icon of evil. What? The icon of evil. 
Hitler's mom. Okay, well, that title alone tells you that you're going to hear about the icon of evil. evil. It had to do with the rise of radical Islam. Oh, oh God. Here we go. Anyway, yes, Patrick. Uh, it, it, I mean, I, I have to say, when I was doing research on this in college and even afterward, I was surprised at how the United States, France, Great Britain, and the Soviet Union just fucked that whole area of, of, I mean, between Germany splitting it up and then the Jews weren't allowed to go back into the area that they had come from uh, and then the United States wouldn't accept the Jews. I mean, you know, there, there were a lot of things that I, I learned beyond what I had learned in high school. And, mm -hmm. and I had a pretty damn good history lesson in high school, but you know, it. I don't blame the Jews for wanting to stay there. No. I don't blame the Jews for their attitude toward the Palestinian, uh, because really, I don't think that they had much of a choice. Do you think well, it was? No, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Sick? Vicky Chang writes, uh, "It was the Gauchos or the Catskills, and Grosinger's was full up." <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> you, know, you know, during during the split up of uh, of uh, Europe, uh, when Stalin and FDR uh, and um, and Churchill were negotiating uh, all of these uh, the, the spoils of war, FDR was sick. I and, and he wasn't uh, strong enough, I think, to be able to negotiate what was going on. And Stalin took advantage of, of that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, to allow well, also them to Stalin, build their Sta empire. Stalin felt they should get uh, the lion's share of the land anyway because of the deaths they had incurred as a result of that war. I mean, they had taken a bigger hit than any other population in the world. They lost 25 million uh, Russians. I think we lost about 500,000 Americans. That was all. When you compare that to 25 million. Six million Jews. Pretty, pretty, pretty scary. Six million Jews is small in comparison to 25 million uh, Russians. Okay. The total population in the world is 13 million. Y yeah. Well, uh, you know, I mean, um, uh, at least we know that uh, Hitler lightened up on us. Uh, you know, I mean. He made more parking spaces, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was there was one person, some rap artist or something like that. Uh, I saw this on TMZ, who said that she sees the good in everybody. She even sees the good in Hitler, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, I can say that for a lot of people. You know, I can see the good. No, I really can't see the good in Trump, but I I can see the good in people. But I'm sorry, there is no good you could see in Hitler. If you can see good in Hitler, then you enjoy watching evil. You know. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I just don't understand somebody making that kind of comment, except that she's stupid and she's a rap artist. So what can right. I say? Hey, would you read the book if I sent it to you? No, no way. Uh -uh. Not with a title like that, no. No, I don't, I don't read books with prejudicial <laughs> titles. It's not yeah. prejudicial. It, it's, uh, it's, what was uh, the title again? Icon of Evil. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about Hitler. Is it, the uh, uh, was, uh, and Vicky Chang wrote Emoticon of Evil. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, mm. So anyway, hey, look, hey, there's, there's a theme. Uh, and we didn't have that many people watching on the TV thing tonight, which makes me think I might just quit doing the TV thing altogether and just keep it as a conversation between all of us. Anyway, uh, uh, but then again, it may be a slow week for one reason or another. It was a great night, Tuesday night, so eh. Anyway. You guys have been terrific. Held down the show really nicely. Uh, shows what three uh, intelligent people and one dumb one uh, can uh, can do. But you talk to say that about me? <laughs> no, no, no I'm, I'm making you one of the smart ones. Uh, oh, does that yeah, pain me? Yeah. Oh, anyway, hey, listen, I gotta go. Uh, everybody, uh, just uh, wave goodbye because it's time to say goodbye to them, and uh, we'll see you again, hopefully again tomorrow night. Bye bye. See you later. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett, and that's all she wrote for the, uh, the, for the program tonight. Uh, I thank you so much for having joined us. Uh, and uh, stay tuned now for um, 
the two, gruesome twosome, uh, J- Jack Bishop and Amy Manuel, on the uh, uh, intersection. I'm trying to do two things at the same time, and it's very difficult. On the intersection, they're coming up right next, and then at uh, mid at one o'clock this morning, it's connections tomorrow night, 9:30 Eastern time. We start off the night with Damian Chaplin. I'm Alex Bennett. We'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.